Hmm. No, wait, stop. Before you type another long post asking for approvals or updates or just trying to get your team input, there's a better way. Hi, I'm your computer friend, Connie, and I want to show you about the three must-have apps to be using within your Microsoft Teams posts. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm going to delete this post, though. By the end of this video, you won't be sending any more of those posts that say, hey, everybody, what do you think about da da da? Those days are over. So let's stop doing this where we write a question or ask for input in our posts, and let's start using polls instead. So let me show you how. You're going to click on post and channel as you normally would. You can then go to the plus sign at the bottom of our post to create the poll. So we want to use that app and you can search for polls at the top there. If it wasn't available to you yet or you hadn't used it yet, you might have an add button. If you don't see it come up at all and it should look like the one I'm showing you here, then you may want to talk to your IT department about making sure that that's available to you in the team that you're in. Okay, I'm going to click on polls and we'll start with putting in the question that we're asking of people and then we'll change the options to be what we want the options to be that they pick from. And I can, of course, add more options and we can allow people to select more than one thing if that makes sense for the poll that we have. And we can even record who said what. I'm going to leave it as the way it is. And let's just take a quick preview. So that's how it will look. And then everybody will have an option to submit their vote. So let's send this off. So now I don't need this post that I was starting. So I'm going to just close out of that. And you're going to see it says new activity because that is where the poll is recorded. Connie entered a poll in the posts. And then here are the answers from the polls. I'll submit my vote as one of the people in the team. Choose my answer and then submit vote. Okay, and we see the results right away. So live time. And these Polls, by the way, are kept in the Microsoft Forms app of the person that created the poll. So if you ever need to see them all together, you can access them there. Otherwise, they will also remain in the Teams channel area here. So with polls, it makes things less confusing, right? We have clear answers that we can choose from rather than open-ended kinds of questions. We can visually get the results right away. And with polls, because it's multiple choice and there's that little area that we just click on to make our choice, it makes it much faster for that recipient to give their answer instead of having to type it. So let's stop typing and start polling. So now we'll move on to our second example of an app that you're going to love to use in your Teams channel instead of just typing out a post like I just did here. I'm going to show you how to use the updates app. So rather than typing a message like I've just done here, we're going to have the updates app automatically send the request for updates from our people that we need those updates from. So let me go ahead and delete this particular message. And now let's try that updates app. So we're going to go to post in the channel again. So make sure you're in the right team, the right channel. You're going to go to that plus sign at the bottom again, and you're going to search for updates. And you see that that's another purple looking app that's available to you. Once I'm in the opening screen, I'm going to scroll down and see that there's actually some templates available to me for creating updates. So I can actually just use the templates that are given, maybe modify them a little bit if I choose to, or I can start from blank. And on the left side there, we do have different choices of different kinds of templates. We'll keep it simple for this example, and I'll try out the project progress template. So you ha I have an option of previewing that template before I use it. Let's just take a quick peek. So it's just showing me that once this template is in place, this is how the reporting can look. I can see how many people submitted the template to me, um, how what their predominant answer to one of my main questions was. And then of course I can click on each one of them and see what their answers are. So I like this template. I like what it's asking. So I'm going to say, use this template. And I do have the pencil here beside project progress. So I could change the title of this particular update. I'm going to leave it as is. And if I click on that first question, let me just click on it. I can change the name of my first question. So right now it says project name. I could be saying project name and number. And it's saying that this is required, a required question that has to be answered every time. So anything with the star means it's required. So we're asking, what's the project name and number? Are you on track or at risk? And then what are your updates that you can summarize here? Is anything blocking your progress? And if so, give me some details. And you see at the very bottom, I could add my own question if I wish to. And when I'm adding a question, not only can I customize the question, I can certainly change what type of question it is. Rather than it being like a text question, is it just a number? 
number I'm looking for? Is it a single choice or a multiple choice drop down and so on? So lots of options for you. Now on the right side, this is important to consider because it's saying this particular update is in one of our teams in one of our channels. Is everyone in our team channel to receive this request? And if so, we leave it at everyone in this group. If not, we would hit the X to that and then type in who it is from our team that we want to submit these updates. So I typed in info, another email address for someone in my team, and it's showing me this person as opposed to everyone in the group. And then who can view the submissions? I can choose everyone in the group. And so it's showing me everyone in this group when I'm hovered on it, or I could hit the X and then just choose the people that should be seeing this. So that's fine the way it's left. Now, the next question is who can manage this request? So who could make changes to it? So for this one, I have myself managing the request, but I could add more people if I choose to. And then set due date and recurrence. So this is where it's very neat because if this is an update, I mean, it's about a project, I might be wanting to know this every week or every month, or let's just see what our choices are. So if I click on the drop down here, okay, so these are your choices for this particular update. I'll just say it's a one time. So when I say it's one time, I can choose what date the update is due on. So let's say it's due by Friday. And then of course, what time due by one o'clock. And then do I want a reminder to be sent out to the people that need to send the update to me uh, and what kind of reminders so right now it's saying it's going to remind everybody one hour before the due time I might change that to be one day. Okay. And then two more questions there on this particular update. And that is, do you need a file attached to it? And so that's turned off in this case. If we turn it on, then that just means they can upload a file with their update response. And then the last thing is once they've sent the update, can they go back and edit it? And so we're saying here that they can, you may not want that turned on. So you of course can just turn it off. Now I think I'm going to change who can view this to just myself. Okay. So this way, this particular update, is between me and this other person. Nobody else in the team sees it. So even though I say send a group, only these people will see the updates. Okay, so I'm going to click on send a group. Now it is telling me based on the team that I'm in, I haven't used the updates in this conversation before. So I have used updates in other teams before, but not in this particular example one. So I'm going to click on continue. Okay, now this is how the post's looking for us. There's a place for this particular update. It's showing that it's in progress and that someone can submit that update and that someone is being notified that info at Mission Computers. And here you're actually seeing how they would fill it in. So this information will stay in the team and in the channel, but we can also get it from the updates app if we put it on the left hand side of our screen. We might be asking for updates on various things in various teams and various channels. So it's nice to kind of see all the updates together and they can be updates that we've requested or updates that people have requested of us. So let's find out how we get all those updates together. I'm going to go to the three dots on the left side of my screen here and you see I have updates already showing there. You may not. So you're going to have to search for that app. I'm going to click on updates and now it's showing me on my left side. And if I scroll down, here's where it's showing the update that we just did that's due August 8th at one o'clock. And it's saying that nobody's submitted to what want to send a reminder right now. The reminder is going to go out one day ahead of time as well as I'm of course getting it to right now, but you have an option to send another reminder if you need to. So that's kind of neat. And then these other ones that are showing here are other updates that I've done in the past. So not only can you make your team's messages more impactful by using the updates app, but you can easily keep track of what you've sent for an update or what you've received or both. So one of the advantages to using the updates app rather than typing in an update in the posts is that this is a much more structured approach. We really get the answers that we're looking for. It also means it's very consistent. All our team members are getting the same requests. If you're sending it to all team members, there's reminders that are automatic with this. There's a nice visual dashboard. So not only in the post area, do we have that dashboard of what's happening with that project progress, but we also have it if we go to the three dots and go to the up 
updates area there as well. And this keeps a history of all the updates we've ever received or sent. All right, let's look at the third app that can replace those messages that we type in. So instead of sending a message like this, where we ask somebody to look over a file and approve it for us as quick as possible. In this example, we're saying by tomorrow, you know, I'm not going to use this post. So I didn't attach the actual file. Let's look at the approvals app to see how that can help us with getting this kind of response. And again, I'm going to go to post and channel. I'm going to hit that plus sign again. And approvals is the app we're looking for this time. So by the way, all three of these apps that I'm talking about are Microsoft based apps. They're not third party apps of any kind. They come with your Microsoft 365. So I'm going to click on approvals. And if I need signatures for my approvals and I already have Adobe sign or DocuSign, I can choose one of those options there. I'm just going to choose the basic request, but I want you to notice there is one here already saying overtime. So you can actually make an approval that is standardized for your organization, for the team and the channel that you're in. You can create your own template. I'm going to start from scratch just so you see how that works, but just keep in mind that it could be a template that you use over and over again. So we'll say basic request and we start by putting in a name for this approval. Now we can ask for a number of people to approve this for us. And as you see, the first option is require responses in a certain order. I don't need responses in a certain order, but I do want somebody in particular to approve this. So I'm going to use that other email address I have. Now this particular basic form is giving me the option to say a priority. So the priority is medium versus important. We'll say it's important. And then any additional information I want to put in here and the attachment. So it's an expense report. So you probably should have an attachment. So I've added my attachment and now I'm ready to send this off for approval. So I'm going to click on send. And again, it's telling me I haven't used approvals in this particular team yet. So I need to just click on continue to get it going. And here's the request for the approval showing in the posts area of this team channel. So it's nice because it's showing the notes that I put in there, the file that I put in there, and of course who requested it and and who it's supposed to be approved by. If I click on view details, it will just let me know kind of similar to what I'm seeing there, but I have the option to follow up. And once I choose follow up, it actually sends another notification to that person I'm requesting this approval from. So it gives them another message. Now, just like the updates app, this approvals app has a place where you can see all the approvals sent or received in one screen. Because again, you might have more than one approval type in your different teams in your different channels. So let's go to the three dots on the left side and you'll see I have approvals already there. You can search for it if you don't. And I'm starting with the ones that I've sent and you see the expense report approvals at the top there. Important. It was created on this day and it was sent by this person and sent to that person. But it's also showing me all the other ones that are there and I could go into each of these if I wanted to look at them further. So these are the ones I have sent. But at the top, it also shows me received. And these are the ones I've received. So someone sent them to me. And if you notice on the left side, if I'm using Adobe Sign or DocuSign, I do have those options as well. And those will show the approvals in a separate list. So I won't bother clicking on those. Okay, so the advantages of the approvals app is the, just the organization of being able to see it in your posts area, being able to see all the approvals from one screen as well, and getting those notifications, getting, getting it a bit more straightforward and structured so you have the right information that you're requesting and the right authorization from that approver. This also could help with having that audit trail that you might need for your records or for compliance. All right, so you learned about polls, updates, and approvals as apps you can use right from the post button in a Teams channel, and these change the look of your conversations within Teams. Please let me know in the comments which of these you like, which of these you want to use, or maybe you're already using, any, any other tips that you might have. Love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.